He's sitting next to me. Oh, ah, welcome. Why you always do like you do the most awkward silent dance and everything when this show starts up. Boy, if I could blush. Still, all right. Hello and welcome to our 48th episode. It is Thursday, May 3rd, 2018. We are live here from Redmond, Washington. I can do awkward really well, so I just wanted to showcase that. Speaking of showcasing, faster than light and low latency, interactivity, not interactive. Oh my God, I can't say it the, I can't say it the wrong way now. I can't say it the wrong way now. Anyway, what that means is that you interact with us as the show goes on. Pretty simple. That's right, K Town Tastic. See what I did? <gasps> I used both of your things oh, in oh, one oh, sentence. Oh, the esports world is constantly changing and busier than ever, and since this show is for you, you get to decide what we talk about and cover and hype. And blurt on, on, and, and on, and on. And blurt on, is on. very this is much the show what that happens. Never ends. She speaks for all of us, and she I meant to say she. Wow, right. <laughs> I was so. trying not to say true. <laughs> Kate identifies me as something <laughs> totally different than what I am. <laughs> That's cool. Maybe I was just talking about myself there, our town tastic. And how do we do that? Well, you simply check out those voting options. You'll see you soon below the window. That is video. That's right. We may be up on the desk, but this is your show. We'll have trivia, more videos to highlight, more interviews with some of the people behind the scenes, and much, much, much more. So many mores on the muches. So be sure to get your selection in if you want to hear the latest from your favorite eSports. So let's get right into it, shall we? Kate, how do we start off this show and every show? Not with Clip of the Week That's this week. That's right. <laughs> I'm so torn. Clip of the what? <laughs> no. JK, uh -huh. it's time for interactivity because it's enabled. Choose the next segment here. We got CSGO with I Am Sydney Smash Brothers. NBA 2K League and Overwatch League. Looks like the NBA 2... Oops, Smash Brothers has taken over a little bit. Have you seen so much of the, uh, much of the NBA 2K League shit? stuff <laughs> yeah clip it oh, 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 oh. welcome back ricari oh this is <laughs> such a great day to be here today no i haven't oh I that's haven't. that is a shame it's lovely do you remember spy kids where they said oh shiitake mushrooms that's what you should i you rolled it in love there. those mushrooms and mm -hmm. that's why i like to talk about it on shows <laughs> like this one speaking of shows like this one ricari take it away oh i will without the curse <laughs> now the biggest national super smash brothers melee invitational is back for the sixth installment of the <coughs> smash Summit. Tournament Series. <laughs> Hosted by Beyond the Summit, the top 16 melee players from around the world were invited to LA to stay and play in the Summit Gaming House for three days. Now, some players were voted to attend by community donations with each player's community, helping to see their favorite player take on the world's best. Mm -hmm. Now, among the other invited players are Mango, who we've talked about on the show, actually, mm -hmm. Axe, Plup, Mewtwo King, Wizrobe, and Leffen from Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> Leffen's from Von Sweden. Care to yeah. Help me with my rucksack. Oh, okay, sir. Oh, sir. No, wait, wait, wait. I know that. Come on. Wait, wait. Come on. From your rucksack. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. But, but you're wearing later hosen. Later hosen. Oh, oh yeah, it's from the. It's from. No, it's from Frozen. It. No, it's not from Frozen. Yeah. Huh? Nope. With players as fat and none qualifying by placing top two at full bloom four for year players voted in, we have hugs, <laughs> West Balls, Two Saints, Zane, Ginger, and is that Amsa from Japan? Mm. That is actually from Trading Places. When they're riding the train to go to the final little Wall Street bit, and she comes in, can't you help me with my rucksack? Mm, I went way back. Malik wasn't even alive. <laughs> now, in previous years, Swedish players Armada and Team Alliance used Fox and Peach to become the first and only champion of Summit for four consecutive years. That's Almost good. five like that one. Last year, <laughs> he was dethroned by Team Liquid's Jigglypuff main, Hungrybox. Now, Armada was known as the undisputed best player for years, but with Hungrybox winning so many recent tournaments, there's now conflict for the crown. With both Armada and Hungrybox in attendance, this tournament will likely decide who that new number one ranked player is. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm, that many. That many. There can only be one. Now, so it is primarily about determining who is the best of the best, but it doesn't come without rewards of its own. Outside of draft crew battles and extra events, players have a chance to win their share of 15,000 big ones, $10,000 for singles, and 5,000 for doubles. Doubles. That's what I say. It's true. Now, today through May 6th, you check out the stream live at twitch.tv slash BTS smash and get all the info at smash.gg slash summit the number six. Was that our first uh, uh, S bomb? Yeah. Our first, our first bomb. No, on the show. We've, boy, had, we've I, had another one. Boy, I hope. Was I gone? I, no, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, you, you, you are I was gone. With Ethan? What we had? Ethan. Okay. I had a, I had a thing. Kate also. I did that too. Kate also said a certain word like too short. 
Nobody's really going to get that, but I'm just going to let you know she said it. All right, anyway, you've got 30 seconds to vote for our next segment, and those Hello. options are actually right below the video window. I'm going to do the Malik thing. Do I'm it! i go like this and point way down here. No, it doesn't <coughs> work. Doesn't Excuse work. me. I can't do what he does. He's, he's too no good No one can do what this. Malik does. No, no, not he's at all. He's a prince. He is, and a star. Anyway, CSGO, I am Sydney, Call of Duty, NBA 2K League, and Overwatch. Ooh, Overwatch. Overwatch. Telling you right now, there's some very, there's some good stuff happening here. By the way, that first story rivaled our chat for best gamer tags. Because right now our chat's doing pretty well in the gamer tag department, if I do say so. A modern self. One three one king though. What's that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> someone, someone, get, let's get our mod on that. Let's make sure it's. Oh, Call of Duty, COD. Would they you like to take the? I in? shall, in fact, do those things. Lock it in. I will. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. You don't want me to do that. Okay, let's talk about this. The fifth major international offline Call of Duty World War II tournament that's a lot to say, went down in Seattle. That's here last weekend. Featuring the best teams of the game has to offer fighting for their share of 200,000 doll hairs. Now, big money isn't the only thing on the line as the players can also win from pro points as well. Players with the highest pro points are eligible to be invited to open events, invitationals, and the CWL Global Pro League. Basically, it's your ticket to the big show. I'm still giggling. Now, just at the beginning of April, we saw FaZe Clan decimate the competition and take home the CWL Pro League Stage 1 Championship. This time around, they would tie for ninth with so many killer teams at this event in Seattle because everybody comes to Seattle, right? There was no guessing who would rise to the top, but who did? Who, who did, ascended? in fact. The team that ascended, and I'll tell you right now, through the ranks this time was Rise Nation. Now, in an interesting reversal of roles, Rise Nation was one to tie, was the one to tie for seventh at the last event that FaZe Clan won. Consisting of Looney, we're talking TJ Holly, Gunless, and Slasher. Now, since joining the team at the beginning of 2018, Gunless has been anything but, and has helped the team drastically improve their performance, landing them as CWL Atlanta Open champions just about a month, a little bit more than a month ago. Now, when it came to the final bracket in Seattle, it was evil geniuses that would be waiting mm -hmm. in the grand final, having defeated teams such as Envy, Echo Fox, and E United on the way. Now, EG decimated the competition, defeating every team they faced in the bracket 3-0. Clean sweeps, except for a single game loss to Echo Fox. Mm -hmm. Now, it was quite the opposite story for Rise Nation as their 1-3 results in pool play landed them immediately in the loser's bracket. I love that line, immediately. Yeah, immediately. You will immediately go in the loser's bracket. Hey, fellas, you know, coming out of pool play, you're going to be in losers. Immediately. immediately. Don't even pass go. Do not collect 200. <laughs> but eventually, I guess they ended up passing go, maybe once or twice. Yeah, and they actually With did collect 200. $200? 1000 Wow, you're just going to spoil it? <laughs> All right. Well, with Rise going to game five against Envy and Luminosity, it was a nail biting track to get to the final bracket. As their name suggests, <clears> though, <throat> the team doesn't start at the top. They rise. Rise. We were just talking about that movie. Rise. That's a pretty good. Rising. Oh, if you can get that one movie, too. It's an Eddie Murphy one. No. Now, the team continued to power up, dominating Echo Fox 3 1 and E United 3 0 to earn their spot in the grand final against Evil Geniuses. EG. Rise Nation's momentum couldn't be stopped as they topped, or excuse me, toppled EG 3-1, resetting the bracket and set two. Rise picked up the cell phone, called EG, phoned a friend, and said, I got your number. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, that sounds like a Kate, Kate type hey, fun there. No. Sweeping the set 3-0 and being crowned CWL Seattle Open champion. That's true. Now with $80,000 in their pockets and 25,000 additional pro points. Oh, the, the whole pot was 200,000 is what I was trying to say. Uh, <laughs> your phone wasn't on the thing. No, not at all. 25,000 additional pro points a team is looking to like the top dogs. But if history shows us anything, is that you never know who our next champions might be. So to keep up with the CWL Pro League for upcoming events, head over to callofduty.com slash esports. 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 I'm going to see how many Eddie Murphy references I can sneak into today's episode. That's okay, chat. You so heard done, him. I've done two now. He's done two. The You've heard one, him as soon as you. With, uh, him and Owen Wilson. Um, spies? Owen spy, Wilson. Uh, spies like what? No, they were both spies and they were in like Romania and he was trying to teach Owen Wilson how to like go on his first date type Chet, thing. if you have any information, please send I it. For, you know what? I have, I, it's almost like I have a computer right here. Anyway, 30 seconds on the clock, yes? Uh, yes, in fact, and I'll tell you who's currently leading. It looks like we've got NBA 2K front runner, CSGO, I am Sydney. we got then League of Legends, that old chestnut. And, of course, rounding it out with Overwatch League. I'm always interested. You guys always have such varied, varied, uh, 
like I such spy. very I, I spy. spy. Oh right. I'm just saying you've got such varied like desires to hear us talk about things and it's it's fun to see. Oh, and League of Legends just came out on top in the No, oh, no. Okay. League. Oh wow. Also likely channel Guys. says Am I dating? Yes, I am dating myself by referencing things that came out in the 90s. Is that what you meant? Although, what you I'm meant. pretty sure I'm older than you. By like 10 months? Maybe. Uh. Let's talk about NBA 2K League, shall we? Well, what is it? Who's in it? And where do I watch it? All good questions we hope to answer with this segment. Now, NBA 2K League started back in January with open qualifiers. Players that won at least 50 Pro-Am games were eligible to compete in the combine that took place in February, look at those fabulous little logos. Now, more than 20, <laughs> let's take this again. More than 72,000, you heard me right, 72,000 players qualified, but it was a mere 102 that were eligible to participate in the April 4th draft <laughs> at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, you heard me. It's Madison Square Garden, periods in between. You know who uh, read out? Oh, there he is right there on the screen. In a pre-draft announcement, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver stated that, it would be, that the organization would be treating the NBA 2K League as the fourth official league alongside the NBA, the WNBA, and G Leagues. Silver also expressed his disappointment with the fact that out of the 102 players in the draft, none were women and assured the league would be forming a task force next season to ensure inclusivity in the years to come. And I appreciate that from him and many others. Now, the draft for 2K League had the same look and feel as the NBA draft. Now, the hype around who would be the first picked was massive, though to the surprise of no one, Mavs Gaming selected none other than 23-year-old Dimes in the first round. There it is, that love right there. Look at the emotion. It's just that's overwhelming. That's really Adam Silver. That's really Adam Silver. Like, that's the NBA commissioner. That is the NBA that commissioner. The first in fact, he did. Other notable picks in the first round were Cavs Legion GC selecting Hood is Glitchy <laughs> and Bucks that Gaming selecting Drake Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> that one wins. Drake Griffin wins. That one has a, a sponsorship deal on several different levels. Now, players drafted in the first round each receive a salary of $35,000 over the course of the 12-week season, with players selected in the later, later rounds receiving $32,000. Remember, that's on top of the $100,000 prize pool for each of the three tip-off tournaments. It's kind of like the Triple Crown. You want to win them all. It's true. The season kicked off Tuesday with the first tip-off tournament with the 17 teams split into four groups competing in a round-robin series of games to determine which two teams from each group move on to the quarterfinals. Pretty standard. Easy. Group A had the first game that went into OT with the Cavs Legion GC versus Bucks Gaming, resulting in what was arguably the biggest upset of the week thus far. Mm -hmm. Now, the Cavs were expected to dominate the bracket, and while they did end up finishing 2-1 and one and winning the group overall, their game against Bucks Gaming found them struggling to make plays in the second half of the game with mistakes leading to unnecessary turnovers, giving the Bucks the chance they needed to make a comeback and even things up in the final moments of the fourth quarter. Which is not far off from... Regular NBA playoff like storylines. And there it is. Mm -hmm. You got to take care of that onion or it'll make you cry. But Scott's folksy sayings aside, the first game out of the gate going to OT means we've got some great matchups in this new league. Did you write that? No. Who hurt you? Like whoever wrote that? Who hurt you? <laughs> Why did That's you... what said. They said it a bunch during the actual commentary of these of, of these games. Oh my goodness. Scott, the Scott guy. Now Kingsguard Gaming was the other team to watch <coughs> in Group A, but only ended up with one win and yet another OT game against Bucks Gaming, managing to take the lead by two points in OT, winning 78-76. Mm -hmm. Now the two teams set to move on to the quarterfinals this weekend are Cavs Legion GC and Pistons GT, each going two and one on the day with Cavs winning their group due to their victory over Pistons GT. It's true, that's how it works. Now yesterday's Group B favorite Warriors gaming squad won the bracket after the first two rounds of games left everyone at 1-1. It came down to the final game of the night with the Wizards District Gaming. God, that's uh, Wizards, come on, guys. What? Wizards District Gaming. I know it's from DC, but like. Yeah, District of Columbia. I know, but Washington Wizards Lizards. District Gaming. I know, I know, I, I understand how it happened. I just think Wizards Gaming could have been fine. They, they're all about the district. Uh, True. Like they had well, <laughs> well, this just say taxation without representation. We'll we move it right along. When they hit their stride and ran away with the scoreboard dominating, the Wizards got 82 over. <laughs> The Wizards got 82 over 66. No, yes, no, it's their, they, they have, a, they have a, a very low blood pressure, which is something we've been meaning to talk to them about. But it anyway. say they won 82-66. It's true. And in fairness, if you have that blood pressure, you're probably also winning. Jazz Gaming takes the runner-up spot in the quarterfinals after the Warriors defeated them in round dos. 
Now, for more NBA 2K League action, tune into twitch.tv slash NBA 2K League, where Group C started competition today at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, and continuing tomorrow with Group D culminating with the quarterfinals beginning on Saturday, the 4th, followed by the semifinals and the finals on Sunday, the True. 5th. Starts at about an hour 45. An hour 45. An hour 45. Hour 45. Anywho, so let's bet. talk. What are we talking about? I think, are we doing trivia? Yeah. Oh! Oh, you're excited, huh? Oh! I accurately predicted it. <laughs> like trivia. What word did Kate say in the beginning of our show? What kicked off the <laughs> NBA 2K League? Was it exhibition matches, the NBA draft, the first season match, or NBA combine? <laughs> I should go open the answers. I had to restart my machine. Uh, of course. And I closed them. Yes. Uh, there they are. There they are. Doom, 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 doom. What kicks off uh, normal things? Okay, looks like we got eight, seven seconds here. We have a pretty, well, no, I was going to say, it looks like NBA draft is what everyone's expecting. Yeah. Da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mm -hmm. It was the combine. It was the combine, huh? Apparently. It was the combine. Yeah, they absolutely had to you gotta come, show their you gotta... skills, and then they get drafted. Just like a regular Well done, league. you people who selected D. Moving it right along. Let's what is play. next? What is next? What's the total prize pool for CWL Seattle? Oh, the one that Kate spoiled? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We talked about Rise Nation at the very top. You tell me who spoiled what. Rising. Uh, okay, was, chat. Did was, anyone else get that? <laughs> he was singing "Sexual Healing." Eddie Murphy was in in the movie. Like he's in Owen Wilson's ear. It's Ice Spice. Of they course, have all this sure. fancy tech. Yeah. And he's Owen Wilson's talking to Femke. Uh, what's her last name? Fa oh, uh, oh yeah. Berg, uh, <coughs> Femke no. Jansen. 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 And now what? I now I don't think I know who you're talking about. She was uh, Phoenix. She was uh, she was Jean Grey. Uh, I, yeah, I can't remember. Oh, her, her name, name is Famka. Yeah, something like that. That's an interesting name. Yeah, Fam Fam Famka Jansen. Oh, see? Well, there you go. I did not know that's I what her name I remember silly things that one day will hopefully no make me a very like, fortunate and wealthy human being, but probably not. Anyway, well, that's that answer is $200,000. It's true. You selected B. Way to go. Remember, we have leaderboards at the very end. So choose, and I'm looking at Linux. <laughs> Moving right along to our third trivia question of this trivia section. Which player was voted for Smash Summit 6? Was it Chudat, Leffen, Ginger, or Two Saint? Two Saint. Must have done the buns, bro. No. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing for you. I'm of no help to you of any kind. It's okay. That's oh, okay. interesting. Everyone seems to be uh, convinced that it's ginger. They're, they're ginger snapping. Oh! <laughs> I got <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do I get to vote? No, I don't want to vote. I want to end up vote the because I have you're the gonna be on the board. I'm on the board. I'm not gonna be on the board. Anyway, how much time is left there? Uh, that's a great question. Is it done? Are we done? Oh, you didn't put a timer on? <laughs> I, I just want you to know Kate asked, is it done? And then we hear, oh, sorry, from the back room there. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, that means we have to run our mouths for 20 more seconds. 20 What's more seconds? You know to do how hard to do? Good grief. I have oh, that's to think okay. of another reference. Yeah, I was going to say, chat, make sure that if you are hearing any Eddie Murphy references, that you make sure you mention it in chat, because Rikari is apparently keeping track. Kate will give you a prize. I, I don't will know what give the prize you is. the It'll prize of me dropping a another. A nod. I'll, I'll drop another bomb. <laughs> 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 that should actually be that sixth thing. Okay. Oh, that should. Oh, it I thought should. you did it again. I, I know. Like, Guys, goodness. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but nobody got it correct. What was it? True that. Hmm. True that. Uh uh uh. That's Why okay, you do that? y'all. Try to I be get a it. Tough dad, Things happen. But you'd be making me laugh. No, that's Will Smith. Yeah, you knew that one. <laughs> I just <laughs> told you can't. pointless information. I know. Song lyrics, numbers, sequences. Let's, let's, let's see more pointless information. JK Esports is life. Wow. Wow. Kate's really repping that uh, Thursday is Friday type thing. Oh, All right. Yeah. What's next here for our next segment? CSGO is still up there. League of Legends. Dragon Ball Fighters and Overwatch League. And you do fighters. You do not do fighters eat. No, it's, they've definitely come out and said it's fighters. Then that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> that Looks was Kate's like... way of saying, thank you for letting me know that before we selected it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like League of Legends, however, is currently kicking some earths. We're coming into uh, MSI. Very exciting times. I said this is the remedial class today. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely in the remedial class. <laughs> oh, I feel you. Oh, League. 
Let's talk about League of Legends. You got it. Shall we? Thank you kindly. The first edition of the European Masters kicked off last month in Leicester, UK. I think it's Leicester because that's how they spell Leicester Square in London. Moving right along, this epic new tournament brings together teams from every EU region, regional league to battle it out for the share of 150,000 thousand euros. So way better than. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the prize pool plus the, of course, bragging rights for the EU region. Now, group stage took place mid-month. 16 teams were divided into four pools, and they played a single round robin best of one. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, the top three teams from each group then moved on to the knockout stage. Now, the teams that earned first in groups ended up beating out the teams that came to take them on in the knockout stage, which left four very strong teams to battle it out in the semifinals and finals. It's true. Now, first up, it was Gamers Origin versus Illuminar Gaming in the best of three. This match was a quick one, and the Illuminar took... Took... <laughs> what were you going to say, Joe? I, wa I was, like, trying to figure... Anyway, whatever, it's fine. It's it me. says Geo. It does. Took Go. It's true. Uh, out in the first two games, making them the first to move on to the finals. Next, it was Origin versus Mad Lions. Great names, That's all. Great name. That had gone undefeated, knocking out most teams they came up against in the first two games. Origin, on the other hand, had to fight tooth and nail to earn their victories. So while many thought they knew where this match was headed, most... Were proven wrong when Origin took the match two games to one. Now this meant Origin would be sent up against Illuminar in the best of five grand final. Mm. Now, Illuminar may have looked like the strongest team, but after Origin showed just how hard they were willing to fight, many fans were left on the fence when they're trying to decide who they thought would come out on top. Fences. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. That's true. Now Origin came out strong taking game one. Game two, however, Illuminar had control for most of the most of the game. Right up until the end, which again, this seems to happen. 2K League it happened. There it is. It's happening here as well. Origin swooped in and took the win. Game three was Illuminar's last chance to stay in the game, in the match overall, but Origin made quick work of Illuminar completing the sweep, sealing their fate as champions. Congrats to Poland's Origin on their momentous win. The underdog, the crowd favorite, now the League of Legends European Masters. To watch the VODs, head over to ESL's YouTube channel. And if you want up to the minute news, give them a follow on Twitter at ESLLOL. Huck. That clap was an Eddie Murphy, or Eddie Murphy reference as well. Guys. But you got an, oh, Hercules. Hercules, you know Hercules. Oh, Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> no, the clumps. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that one we know. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh, go. Oh, I got another one for you. Uh -huh. You're not going to know that one either. Chat, help me out here. Ha-ha. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, yes, yeah, good well, call. Uh, goodness. All right, so the next four segments that we get to choose from are CSGO, I Am Sydney, StarCraft II, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Overwatch League. Yes. The aha was uh, coming to America. Because, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy uh -huh. and Arsenio Hall both played multiple characters in there. I did um, not. I also haven't seen that movie. I know. I, you know what? I'm doing the worst job as a co-host because, like, it's sort of like improv. <laughs> that what? instant Kate. So, Mara, you have... I don't know. I don't know. Cat oh, God. Someone said Catherine. I oh, don't. my goodness. Yeah. Uh, anyway, oh, it's we're Josh go with, that said Catherine. He knows. We're going to go with Overwatch League, but still, yeah. Wow. Oh, I'll do. Okay. Go ahead. No, you're Yay. Hey, Take off. Sorry. I'm not good at movie references, but boy, do I enjoy Overwatch League. <laughs> but let's start on a sad note. Shanghai still sucks. <laughs> Though they are working on our heartstrings with a heartbreaking Game 5 loss against Fusion, adding insult to injury, literally, was the teabagging incident brought to us by Fusion's Carpe. We're actually about to see him do it, see if you can catch it. They just couldn't stop himself from rubbing in the kill all over Shanghai's Adu in the first map. This is it really about to happen it's right here? It's literally coming up right here. He's, he's Tracer. Here we go. That's the one. And teabag. No, it's celebratory crouch. It just got stuck. At any got rate. caught up in the geometry here, of the All map. I know is that the crowd was not on his side. Oh, okay. Carpe, what the French. Shanghai hasn't won a game yet. Please don't push their faces into it. They can't catch a break. Apparently not. Now, Shanghai is getting dangerously close to ending stage three with three new Korean players and zero wins, including one of my favorites, Kaguri. I have a question because I doubt this graphic is in here. Lennox, I'm looking at you. Yeah, well, you can look at but me. But do you know who's got the longest losing streak in all of major sports? Please don't say it's Shanghai. It's now Shanghai. God I think darn it was it. Uh, 28 was the original. Are they including high. maps in this? <clears throat> They're including NBA, uh, oh, MLB, French NHL, toast. and it was the Philadelphia 76ers who had that longest losing streak. And what Shanghai tied them about a week ago. 
What a delight that is. Uh -huh. Well, let's talk about the L.A. teams because they are actually still in playoff contention. Valiant specifically had a great momentum over the last couple of weeks, enjoying a five-game win streak. They sadly came to an end here in Stage 4, hoping to make their first trip to Stage 5 playoffs in Week 5 that could spell delight or disaster with matches against Boston and Philadelphia. Now, the other L.A. gladiators, that is, also face off against the Uprising with their playoff hopes on the line. A single loss could send them packing, and while their match against Florida may not prove taxing because the mayhem is... Not a match, with, a match up with Boston. Very well might be the straw that broke the camel's back. Speaking of mayhem, let's talk about those who we definitely won't see in stage three playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's Florida Mayhem, Dallas Fuel, and Shanghai Dragons. That last one's surprising. I know, right? <laughs> the come-from-behind Cinderella story of the year. It's the Houston Outlaws who might be able to exploit any Boston wins next week as they are looking for the weak link in the chain of playoff contenders to make their run into the Stage 3 title match. New York stumbled early in the week but took down the new kids San Francisco 3-1 and Seoul Dynasty 4-0 to keep their 7-1 record in second place stage final. <laughs> second place stage standing going into playoffs hard to say words out loud boston however still unbeaten in stage three with 12 straight victories putting them at the top of the stage three standings close behind we've got the stage two champs new york excelsior followed by the la teams of valiant and gladiators win against both la teams could mean boston sets the first ever record for the most wins in a single stage Stage 3 title matches begin Sunday at 1 p.m. To get in on all the action, head over to overwatchleague.com or follow them on the socials at WatchOverLeague. That is not... At what? <sighs> you made it all the way to the last word. I was going to say, great job. At Overwatch League. <laughs> watch Over League. <laughs> but you should watch the I just Overwatch League. Sure people got the right oh, Lord. Hey, that's fine. This is what we do. Welcome right, to Thursday. Yeah. We do have fun. You know, speaking of fun... We got we got all kinds of people on our uh, our situation here. We're gonna actually choose the next segment. Is that right there? I see next segment. I see next I segment. I see next segment. I'm as voting. Well. I'm doing my part. That's not an Eddie Murphy reference, but I cannot hear anything out of my IFB. Oh so really? So that's fine. Neither can I. Oh, th that's sort of a here. thing. <laughs> you didn't even wear yours. I hear, I hear Lennox trying to talk to us in our ears, and I got nothing. Okay, so it looks like we got seven seconds left. Dragon Ball Fighters. Gwent, Gwent had Gwent a nice. They, it is up there. Unfortunately, uh, one of my favorite hosts is with the most. This is uh, Michelle, whose last name I totally forgot just now, which is really embarrassing. But anyway, she couldn't do it, so somebody else had to go. She had knee surgery. Oh, Moving right ooh, along, I feel like you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna take the uh, make Se the FGC crowd. Second what, my Dragon uh, Ball tattoo? Well, it is now. All right. Anyway, Clutch 2018 took place last month in the ever so lovely Indianapolis, which is the first time I've ever been, <laughs> like, heard of that city referenced in that way. Now, Clutch is a large gaming event focused around fan favorite fighting games hosted by Net Battles and Kit. It features tournaments in the games across, the, or excuse me, features tournaments in games across the entire fighting game genre, including Tekken 7, Injustice 2, and many more, even hitting some of the older titles like Street Fighter 2 Turbo and MVC2. However, today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Fighters tournament. 50 fighters took the stage, but only one could be crowned champion, almost like all the rest of the tournaments. Now, it all came down to the <laughs> winner's finals where we saw an epic match between Sonic Fox, who is everywhere in the FGC, yeah. and the Kill Sage. Now, all signs seemed to point towards Kill Sage, but as Sage took the first match by storm, Sonic seemed to learn the tempo pretty quick, taking the next match, and from there, Sage and Sonic's traded wins back and forth until Game 5 and Game 5. Sonic made quick work of Sage. Oh, that's right. I forgot. This is this is uh, Sonic Fox decided to wear an entire furry's outfit as opposed to just simply the ears and the mm. and the the tail, which is something interesting it's, entirely. It's the mind games. It's There's, the mind games. Yeah, that's true. So Sage ended up gets or ended up being sent into the losers finals. Now in those losers finals. Sage had a rematch with Twitch A. Is that Twitch A? Yeah, Twitch A. Who lost to Sage back in the semifinals and fought his way to the losers finals, only to be shut out by Sage once again. 3-0. You know what that means? Ha <laughs> ha! Rematch! Sage making his way back into the grand finals. Felt ready to take on Sonic once more, but Sonic had different plans. Sonic Fox, again, I, I'm telling you, we've mentioned this name many times. And we continue to. Taking the first two wins, seemed like Sage was about ready to face defeat. And then... Sage powered up and took the next two matches without much issue, taking them into game five once more because, of course, why not? Mm -hmm. However, by some miracle, Sonic Fox got his own second win and didn't allow himself to choke away the victory. Fox got Sage into some high combos with Cell and wiped Sage's roster clean, taking home the championship medal for the Dragon Ball Fighters at Clutch 2018. It's like, 
I love watching the parallels between actual sports, esports, whatever. It's all the same. Sports. They always sports. say basketball is a game of runs, mm -hmm. and I think the same is same. You know, the same is true with football, baseball, anything. It's really a. Uh, it shifts and swings and how you recuperate. Mm. You know, you go up a game or two, and sure. then it swings the opposite way, and it's like, who can just battle back? Who can take it home? Who can take it home? Anyway, if you want to catch the highlights and vods, be sure to check it out at twitch.tv slash, should I do what you did? Spin Tuki? <laughs> Spin Tuki. <laughs> <laughs> My job here today is poke fun. Huh? Slash. Yeah, I've been saying Slash for like yeah, 10 yeah, weeks. He's, yeah, he's, he, yeah, he, he gave up. I was just being a contrarian before. <laughs> anyway. Excellent. So let's see here. Um, is it trivia? Yes. No. IRL Esports IRL. makes much more sense in my mind as well. Now, one of the goals of this show is to highlight the amazing people and events that happen in the esports and competitive gaming space, minus Rikari. Wow. Every week, we'll try to feature a different personality, minus Rikari, in the space. And this time, we have a developer interview with game director and creative director of the popular game. I feel like I don't need to say that. Of an incredible game, you know it as For Honor. They actually just released news about their new content update and the new season this morning on their weekly stream that was on Mixer.com slash For Honor. So let's welcome them to the show, find out more about the game and where it is headed. We have a full house today. Please welcome For Honor's game director, Damien, Damien Keegan. Did I get that Hello. right? Hello. Hello, and welcome yes, creative you director, did. Roman Campos Oriala. Did I get that Hi. even close, <laughs> Roman? Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> Excellent! Fantastic! You, you knocked it out. You made it happen. I tried, and then I and then I and then I I pointed to my my misgivings. Anyway, first <laughs> off, guys, tell us who you are. Tell us uh, if the viewers may not know about who you are a little bit about yourself and some of the how how you fit into the For Honor franchise. So my name is. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Yes. Okay. So my name is Roman Camposola. I'm creative director at For Honor oh, really at I Ubisoft hear. Montreal. Oh wow! Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey. Is it better or not? Yeah, you're all good. Damien, go for it. Sorry, Roman, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm creative director at For Honor. I'm For Honor at Ubisoft Montreal. And uh, basically, my role is to oversee all the content produced on the game. Fabulous. And, and I'm Damien. Uh, I'm the game director on, uh, on the game. And uh, my role is to look at all the design uh, made uh, on the game. So conception of gameplay, game modes, but also menus, online stuff, progression, uh, everything. Safe to say that the For Honor franchise is safely in your hands, gentlemen. Yes, not only in our hands, we have a full team working with us, of course, but uh, we're helping in to do the best game as possible. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so for Honor release in February last year, one of the things that we love about the game is that it is so multiplayer focused. You're obviously on this week in esports for a reason. Another thing to love is the emphasis on the action fighting genre, which hasn't been done too much with other titles. Talk to us about what went into creating a unique game like for Honor. So, for now, yes, it's a new IP that was developed at Ubisoft Control. Took more than five years to, uh, to develop, joined the team like uh, yeah, five years ago. Now. <laughs> and uh, from the beginning, it was meant to be a multiplayer game and a team fighting experience. So, a lot of the people on the core team came from the Naruto games that were made at Control, for example. And the foundation of the game, it's what we call the art of battle. So it's really how your right stick control your weapon. And it's not only a gameplay innovation, it's also uh, an animation breakthrough that allows us to really see clearly all the movements of the character, etc. That really makes that uh, melee combat possible. Gotcha. Nice. So you guys are currently in the fifth season of the game titled Age of Wolves, and For Honor has been pretty consistent in the uh, post-launch update department. Now, with season six being announced today called Heroes March, what are you and the team looking for when it comes time to drop another update? Is it more to update the game based on community feedback that you've gotten, or is it enabling, enabling the community to do more with the game itself? 
So in fact, it's both. Uh, we always do uh, many different updates on the game since the beginning. We have like weekly content, we have regular update, balancing update, things like that. And we have, as you said, big new seasons with a bigger patch. So for example, here in season six, we introduced two new heroes uh, reworks. Uh, so what we call a rework is like um, a rebalancing, but also uh, giving a new toolkit to the heroes because we learn a lot uh, throughout the year how we make heroes how we make uh, our game evolve and sometimes we put that back in some of our older heroes to make them uh, competitive again uh, we introducing a new map beachhead based on a very famous uh, story mission of the game and also some new features uh, like the visual collection that uh, is directly an answer from our uh, community and of course we also have a more long-term roadmap for the game like uh, we mentioned earlier today in our, in our live stream where we announced the season, we have a multiple year plan in front of us, like 10 years. But Whoa, for did us, you say 10 years? Yes, that's yes, brilliant. That's the plan for each live game that, uh, that we support. <laughs> but it's not only like planning new stuff, etc. And what we as developer we want to do, it's also listening to the player so like for example one of the highlights of uh, of the next season it's what we call the visual collection so it's your ability to uh, apply any visual of a gear that you've previously loot to a new gear that you have mm -hmm. and that's something that was asked from for the player from the player directly they wanted a way to manage better the inventory etc mm -hmm. and that's for us to provide them well, now speaking of that that competitive that that multiplayer focus that we mentioned earlier, and you just alluded to there, for Honor has seen um, new elements. We're talking about the dedicated servers, input delay that um, uh, be added to the game. So, because you guys are obviously never boring, what's been the process getting these <laughs> into the wild? And and more importantly, um, we talked about community feedback. What what has been the community's reaction to um, some of these additions? Uh, the community reaction was uh, really, really positive on uh, the introduction of uh, dedicated servers and, and land compensation. It's, it's you know, when you, you ship a live game, you always discover uh, things and you have to, to adapt as a, as a developer team. And for example, we discovered some limitation of, on our peer-to-peer -peer, uh, model uh, that was uh, especially impacting uh, 4v4 game modes. And, and so that's why we decided to move to dedicated server. It was a huge change. Like, seven eight months of work full team dedicated only on that and in the end it went really well and uh, since then we have a very positive uh, reaction from the committee and also one of the yeah. things we 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 do uh, based on on uh, the second part of your question yeah. is that we we really uh, put in place um, a way to work with our community. So we're doing a community workshop where we invite members of the community uh, uh, to to the game studio and uh, show them new things that will come uh, in, a, in a few months uh, so that they can uh, react on it, give us feedback, and so that we can adapt that content before uh, releasing it. Uh, and for example, input delay is a very good example of that, so where we had uh, done a private testing uh, with the community uh, to find the right value uh, before releasing it. Man, that's awesome. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, as we are all about competitive gaming on this show, how can our viewers get involved? Are there any tournaments they should be keeping an eye on or either to watch or even to participate in? So, uh, since we built uh, For Honor, it was really a competitive uh, game at the core. We wanted to nail the competitive aspect of a fighting game in a 3D environment, and that was really one of the focus on the game. And when you have a competitive game, then it's easy to do the link with uh, esports events and things like that. And for example, right now we're in a situation where the community is doing a lot of events, a lot of tournaments uh, on the game. So for example, uh, there is one, I think, uh, this weekend uh, that is uh, managed by the four uh, Glory uh, uh, members and they're organizing tournaments themselves and we support that by uh, advertising it during our show and things like that. Nice. That's excellent. Well, guys, a huge thank you to uh, Damien and Roman uh, to your just hearing talk there. Uh, 
where can people find you and your work? If it, <laughs> obviously they can play for honor. And do you have any special shout outs? So first, For Honor is on free weekend this weekend. So if yes. you want to come and join and play that. the game, it's the best time to do it. <laughs> uh, then, then we do what uh, we do what we call the Warriors Den. So every week we have a stream where we discuss about upcoming things into the game, where we do live Q and A with our community, things like that. So it's every uh, Thursday, and it's on Mixer as well. Nice. Uh, so you should uh, come and uh, check it out. And we're available on Twitter. Uh, you will find us by just typing uh, our names if you want to ask us direct uh, questions on the game. Fabulous. Uh, next month at yeah. E3. Maybe you will hear new stuff about us. We'll see. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that just a tease? <laughs> yeah, right. No, it wasn't a tease. That, that, maybe. that was maybe. That was not uh, at all. Oh, no. That's no suggestion. Well, I, for one, am very excited for said E3 non tease tease. So thank you guys very, very much for giving up your time. I know you're super busy, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Bye. See you. I love, love when developers, when the, 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 the actual people that are going in and been building and, and writing the code are interested in the person who's going to win with the tournament, the person who's going to play in a free play. I love the community. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I have a whole entire career that's been going on oh. for <laughs> the better part of a decade based on entirely that. Oops. But yeah, no, I totally get it. It is a breath of fresh air. Isn't Absolutely. it, though? Isn't Absolutely. it? Speaking of fresh air, let's talk about fresh topics. Trivia. Trivia is what I meant to fresh, say. Fresh trivia. Fresh to death tribs. I like how you really said death, not like death. Fresh to death. Is that how they? Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, which player won the Clutch 18 Dragon Ball Fighters event? <laughs> this one. Hey! <laughs> like, I, I see A on there. I can't help but say it. Hey! <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Did you just vote? I hope you didn't I vote. I did not vote. Oh, I have not answer. vote. I just wanted to double check that I I'm correct about this. I will give you a hint this. since there's only a few seconds left. Yeah. We've said this person's name in many Well, I was going to say, yeah, okay. That's events. what I thought. All right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Duh. Sonic, Fox. Sonic, Sonic Fox. Fox. Sonic Fox is here's what here's what I, is so interesting. The guy, I don't know if there is a fighting game he cannot play. Right. Part of me is curious about like w what he would be like on other games, but because so he's just. Like, it's I understanding agree. Understanding fighting game systems is entirely True. different than picking up and playing a shooter. That's fair. Um, but I will say that he has an un preternatural understanding of fighting game mechanics. That well. is just out of out of control. Let's move it right along. Swipe left. Speaking of fresh air, says Kate. <laughs> on NPR? <laughs> Boy, isn't that delightful. Where is the Overwatch League played? Come on. I know exactly where this one is. Seattle, Washington, Dallas, Texas, New York, New York, Burbank, California. Anybody ever play Icy Tower? No? Is that, is that a game? Icy Tower. Icy Tower. Icy Tower was literally a little flash game where you had this dude and he would go, woo. And you had to jump up this icy tower. Like, that's literally it. That does sound like something I would totally get into that's on like a long like plane you, ride. Yeah. Well, what yeah. is that? Oh, Flippy Bird or Flip Bird or whatever that was called. Do you remember? Flappy Bird. That's the one. Do you remember Candy Stand? No. CandyStand.com? Anyway, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer is Burbank, California. Thank you, uh, Dallas, Texas. But although in they fairness, don't play in Jerry Land. No, I was going to say that Texas is like, is, is, that's, a, that's Green Wall territory. But I think that might be Houston. Maybe it's Dallas. I don't remember. Dallas Fusion. Nope, that's Philadelphia Fusion. Dallas Outlaws. Dallas well, Houston Outlaws. Out. Dallas <laughs> French Toast. Oh, no. What's the top prize for the LOL, LOL. East, or European Masters? 25,000 euros. I'm um, sorry? 30,000 euros. Oh, okay. 35,000 euros. This is... This or 40,000 euros. I am... As intrigued Weiß as you are, chat. No ambition. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Yeah, no ambition. Not so good. But if I go to Germany, I can speak it enough to get around. Hey. Like when I was at games, I was I gonna say everybody out. They were like, "What? Uh, you know where you're headed?" Okay. Looks How much like is it? I don't know what this one is. Forty thousand euros. 40,000, huh? Yeah. There we go. I don't know how much that is in American money, but it's the, probably more. The, probably more than 40,000. Like 1.2. No, that the pound was 1.29 to our what? dollar. I don't know. Whatever. Who's I'm not no. winning that money anyway, so it doesn't really nope. matter to me. 
I am not learning German Nightmare Joker 2, although I feel like I should. You should. As culturally, that is where my ancestors derive. Me too. Something. Hey, clearly. see? And also English. Yeah, from Jolly Old Jolly Old Boy. England! <laughs> Every show. <laughs> it's true. Ew. Oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Moving right along. Choose the next segment. CSGO, I am sitting. Here's the thing. CSGO fans, that's the deal. It's a big old major happening over there. Actually, I don't know if it's a major. Would it be a major major? Like, it, would it be a major event? Uh, Major, I don't know if it's a major, because actually Valve does designate majors and minors. You anyway. Said, you said it's a big old major. It's a big old major so for me. Major, I major. enjoy it, but looks like people are really enjoying the Hello Highlight video. What is a highlight video? Well, I'm glad you asked, Rikari, because you're about to see it. Video highlights is our segment where we get to showcase stories within the esports scene that we think you need to watch. For this video, we have... An interview done at the Halo World Championships with none other than Cortana. Well, I mean, really, it's a 343 staff uh, member who cosplays as Cortana. Whatever. She's Same cool. thing, right? Yeah, okay. She does cosplay as a hobby, and what other place to do it than at the World Championships for Halo? Check out the piece. Pew. So I'm back on the show floor, but this time I have found a very, very special lady. Sarah, you look absolutely fantastic. What are you dressed as today? Thank you so much. I am dressed as Cortana from Halo 5. And how long does it take to transform into this character? Oh my gosh, it takes me probably about an hour just to do the makeup situation because I'm a cosplayer for fun, but I never wear any sort of makeup otherwise. So every single time I'm doing this, I feel like I'm leveling up my makeup game and going, okay, don't poke yourself in the eye. All right, you got it. I love it. So you're learning as you go along. That's brilliant. Um, how did you get into cosplay in the first place? I'm very fortunate to have a pair of very wonderfully nerdy parents. Hi, Mom. <laughs> But uh, they, like, whenever I was a kid, I was like, I want to be a Ninja Turtle. So they would help me make a costume, and that's just persisted throughout the years. And then whenever I started at 343, my hobby kind of got to turn into something that I get to do as part of my day job. That's amazing. How, how does it feel being part of such a prestigious event like this and being able to be here and dress how you want to and put your cosplay in action? It's amazingly humbling, especially as a dev on Halo. I'm a longtime fan, and I get to work on something that I love and that I know a lot of my friends love as well. And being here both with my coworkers and other fans, it's just, it's kind of like, wow, thank you so much for entrusting this to us because we love it as much as you do, and it's this wonderful feedback loop of fandom. I love it. Well, you look fantastic. Thank you so much for talking to me. I'll see you around. Guys, it's back to the broadcast. She lives She's in local. LA. Did she move? I think so. Well, if you like that video, and why wouldn't you, check out Halo's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Halo Waypoint, and follow their channel on Mixer at mixer.com slash Halo. You I thought I was going to get, yeah, you I thought, thought I was going to get, get tongue-tied there. Oh, and I did it. Hold up. Oh yeah, that's the one. Please someone meme that. Now we have a lot of goodies buried within these video highlights, so if you see it as a voting option, make sure to select it, give us a break, and enjoy yourself some video highlights. Speaking of voting, let's open it up again. CSGO is still up there. Come on, CS! Kate singing its praises. StarCraft I'm just saying. 2, Dota 2, and God, Grant. in fairness, I could go for almost all of these. I'm just not a digital card person. I feel bad about it, but ugh, I just, I just don't know. You're supposed to remain. Uh, I uh, should be that, but I am not. You know what? I'm just going to vote for it to see if we can get it off the screen here. Gwent? No. Oh. No. <laughs> wow. I was like, wow, what? That's disdain in your voice. Gwent? <laughs> Goodness hey, gracious. Hey, CD Projekt Red did a great job. I'm not saying that. I just. Uh, let's talk it's about. It's not for you. No, it's not. But you know what it is for me? CSGO. All hail the conquering heroes. This week, CSGO was all about the Danes. New players, old. T oh, this is actually. Fun fact, this is actually the wrong script. So hopefully- Oh, I'm so glad we have this one up here then. Here's hey, tell me what I need to know. <laughs> here's what, here we go, this is the right one. Now, if you follow anyone in the CSGO community on social media, which of course I do, you will have no doubt seeing a ton of pics all about long flights. That's because the CSGO scene headed to Sydney, Australia this week for the Intel Extreme Masters Sydney. Now, 16 of the world's most elite CSGO teams face off against each other for guts, glory, and of course their share of $250,000 hairs. And it all kicks off at 6 p.m. today, that's Pacific time here. That's 3 p.m. tomorrow in Sydney. Fun facts. And what a comp competition it will be. Let's talk about the groups, Rikari. 
Oh, you want me to talk about the groups? Fine. Was that a throw? I have no idea. Now, we've got one more day of pool play to go, but we've already seen some upsets, heartbreak, and triumphs. Group A saw the Aussies blaze a trail with Renegades kicking Legacy Esports and the Epic FaZe Clan down to the lower bracket while Tai Lu took down CS Mainstays, SK, and Cloud9. Mm -hmm. Now, the Chinese team would ultimately face Renegades and send them packing with a 2-0 win in the upper bracket while the battle of phase V C9 would rage in the lower bracket, ultimately culminating with a 2-0 victory over Cloud9 to advance to the quarterfinals. Now let's talk Group B. It was all about Astralis, who didn't tiptoe through the competition. No, 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 they bushwhacked, defeating NRG in the best of three in Mouse Sports, as well as Fnatic 0-2-0. Oh, to, to, to zero. They, won, they won handily, is all I'm going to say. Sadly, another Aussie favorite, that's Chiefs Esports Club, was set back in early in the winner's bracket, followed closely by Kenny S's G2 Esports, who found their way to the exit courtesy of Mouse Sports. So now the stage is set for an epic battle. Will FaZe Clan, with their veteran squad of stars, find their way past the Swedish Fnatic team coming off a top four finish at DreamHack Masters last week? Should have had a question mark. <laughs> then it's only the whole hometown Aussie team left in the competition, Renegades versus Simple's Mouse Sports, who still find themselves in the top five CSGO rankings drama 100 percent dun, dun, dun. And that's Ooh, yeah. today right that's, that's like 50 minutes ago that is no I, oh it's 6 p.m our time today 3 p.m them that's correct gotcha. 6 p.m our time so two hours yep and there it is from now. gotcha that's the one all right math don't even worry about it we know what what do we know math Math is hard. Math is hard. In Britain, they call it maths. Math. Although I'm not quite sure how that makes sense. Well, I guess did if there's like trigonometry. Did you know monies is a word? What? Monies. Like monies is legitimately a way to say talk about money. Really? Yep, monies. You could say I have. Well, now we know why they call it maths. Mm -hmm. The more you know. E Star White. The more you know. All right, what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. I'll Oh, what's that, boy? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Eddie Murphy, but that was for no. anybody who went to private school. <laughs> uh, let's see, Forza Motorsport 7, we got StarCraft 2, Dota, which is the ESO 1 event, and Gwent is still on the boards. Looks like Forza Motorsport might be taking it. It's currently at the top of the standings until Ricari decides yeah, to like change it all up. Which, oh, of course you did. I didn't watch the live broadcast, no. I didn't catch that. Of course you did. <laughs> the anyway. John Legend memes afterwards cracked me up, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bro tall forest. Hi, how are you? Delight to have you here in the chat. They said hi, Kate. Uh, yeah, I'm not Kate, so, you know, whatever. Well, fair enough. I guess it's somewhat delightful to have you here in the chat. Oh, Good isn't playing. it, though? Love you all. Hey, let's talk about Forza. Our good friends over at Turn 10 Studios, right up the street here, makers of Forza 7, have been taking esports racing to the next level with the Forza Racing Championships, which is now two weeks underway and picking up speed. The racing championships consist of both NA and European series, each consisting of seven weeks of ranked events and culminating in a live playoff event with a prize pool of $75,000, which will be held right here Downtown Seattle, June 16th and 17th, right when everybody's back from E3. At the end yep, of the literally. series, the top 24 <laughs> drivers will be invited to compete in the Forza Racing World Championship 2018 in where, Kate? Jolly old London! <laughs> For their shot at a $100,000 prize pool and the title. Now, last week, the European Series kicked off the day showing an impressive performance from Forza veteran Lage, who received just received first place in the first two races. Now, the third race of the day started out with a bang when Roadrunner crashed his car, effectively ending his race and slowing down Virus. After a steady middle section with no big moves, Lapsic saw Lage challenge Box for the lead, but Box held him off. Despite his loss, Lage still, oh lord, <laughs> came out on top overall, making the current ranking European league score with Lage in first, Box in second, and Rossi in third. Box not to be boxed into that third spot. I just did that one, though. I but know. on the NA side of things, Venom came off to a hot start, jumping to first place quickly and holding it until the end of the match. The first match, that is. Now, match two kicked off with Venom bumping into Lightning and slowing both players down, leading to a penalty which dropped Venom down from fifth to eighth place. Now, Lightning rallied from the crash and swept to the front to take first place. And now in match three, Lightning once again worked his way up to second place and set his sights on leader Vanquish. Approaching the final turn in lap four, Vanquish made a mistake that Lightning capitalized on, pushing him to victory and putting the final overall score with Lightning in first, Venom in second, Harmonic in third, 
for the NA series. Tune into the live broadcast on Mixer.com slash Forza RC, which airs bi-weekly on Wednesdays. Next one going to be held May 9th at 12 p.m. Pacific time for the European League and 6 p.m. Pacific for the NA League. Also, Forza team will be offering exciting in-game rewards, an updated talent roster, and even new guests throughout the season, only available on Mixer.com. Also, definitely be sure to check out ForzaRC.com for the full scoop and all the news about the Forza Racing Championships. I say it. Therefore, as a it champion. is. You say therefore Chip. you are. See. <laughs> was that was that you showing off your Spanish, or were you Duh. saying see? Was that like the question? Do you see? Do you know what? Hmm. Toss up. All right. Speaking of questions, Kate. Oh my goodness, he's gonna start writing your uh, throws there. I believe uh, the Tash just get up here and just do it. Yeah. Feeling really good about that. My voice sucks right now. I'm still sick. Is anyone in the chat sick? Does that happen to anyone else when they go? Why would you be sick? Why would, out of because, all the things, that's what you do for me lately? Because. It's an Eddie Murphy reference. Oh, Lord. Eddie. Here's a question for you. <laughs> what that have you done Eddie for me Murphy lately? Related. I want and half. Yet, here we are. <laughs> which day does Forza RC broadcast occur? <laughs> Thank you, Rafa. Rakari. <laughs> Wait, which movie was that from? That was actually from, uh, that was from Raw. That wasn't from a movie. That was from a stand-up. Oh. Uh -huh. You gotta watch it. I do. I've got. I. I feel like every time I leave these, uh, the our, our show, I feel like I come home with like all this <laughs> new pop culture yeah. homework. <laughs> and I have. And I. And I'll be honest with you. I have not been helping myself out at all. No, it's okay. It's true. This is what I have you for. You are a bottomless pit of pop culture references for which we can all delve. But let's talk about which day for to RC twenty eighteen broadcast occur. If you said Wednesday, you were right. Ding. Moving right along. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, feeling good, Billy Ray. Or, uh, looking good, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's, that was trading places again. Blarg. Man. I got to see. I will say, is it um, Dan Aykroyd is, is in that one? Yes. All right, way to go. I need to, see some, I need to see some stuff. I need to do some things. What mixer channel does IEM Sydney appear on? Oh, this is a, okay. This is actually... A very good question, and I think I, I, I know the answer. I'm going to double check that I know the answer because I, I remember being confused about this, but I'm glad that we're actually talking about it because so does that it's mean confusing. it was poorly written by the educators? <laughs> no, I think, uh, let's see. Oh, this does not have an answer. I believe I'm going to, I, know, I think I'm going to say what I think it is because. I'm going to say Well, it. the time's up, so go ahead. I'm going to say it's A. No? Yes! yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox in the back went, yo! Like, that, no. like oh, the yeah and a no combined. Thank you. But you exactly. did it. You knocked I did. it out. I All knew right. it. I knew Third things. Third one here? Did we already do three? Did we already that do was three? That, that was three. three? that was three. That was three. That was two? Oh, we're oh, two. Oh, gotcha. Okay, guys, oh. well done. Here, upcoming tournaments. Remember, folks. There's something on the prompter. For these tournaments that are on the Mixer platform and are a part of Mixer Esports, follow the channel to get notifications when they go live. Let's talk about CSGO. Kate, I feel like you want to do that. Okay. One. For those of your, of your T-side and CT-side fans out there, it's terrorists and counter it'll be good for you to know that ESL tournaments can now be found on Mixer. A very exciting day for me. One of the first competitions you'll see and you're able to watch is the IEM Sydney event going on right n Well, no, we decided, what, two, two hours. hours. Mm -hmm. uh, in about two hours. This week, however, will be all about that. Mixer.com slash ESL underscore CSGO. Be sure to show your support and follow that channel to know when they're live. I follow it. Now, Smite, most of the Smite teams have now been qualified for upcoming events, and the first one on the docket is the Smite Masters 2018 event occurring on Wednesday, May 9th through Sunday, May 13th. The best Smite teams in the world will be converging for a finals event to wrap up the spring season. Of course, you can watch all the action on the Smite channel at Mixer.com slash Smite Game, and we'll be right here to preview and recap the event for your knowledge. We, li we live here, and a favorite of this show... We have the Rainbow Six Pro League Finals coming up soon on Saturday, May 19th and Sunday, May 20th on Mixer.com slash Rainbow Six. That is the number, not the word. The best Pro League teams have been qualified for the finals and they are ready to claim the crown of the best Rainbow Six team out there. Tune in when the show is live and relax with others in the Mixer community. I just wanted to stand. Somebody asked earlier, Roby asked why I wasn't standing. 
And I just wanted to show Roby, them. Roby, this exactly is why. why. This is exactly this why. This is why. And I'll tell you, we'll be right here, towering above you, every <laughs> Thursday at 3 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern on this channel. I just want to get out of the shot. This is this is why. <laughs> and in case you're curious, you're watching this channel, Mixer.com slash This Week in Esports, or Esports, as Tara Volker would say. Be sure to watch our past episodes right below on our channel page and follow us on Twitter at WatchMixer for updates on the show and to know what's happening in the wide world of Esports. Also, are we doing it? Are we doing it? Also, tune into Esports these, this, or excuse me, Esports Weekend this weekend, each and every weekend, starting at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, this Saturday, with the rebroadcast of this show and the European Paladins Console Series. Later that night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern, as I Am Sydney kicks off for the final day of competition. Sorry, there's a lot of talking going on and. A lot of things being discussed, and I, for one, have no idea. So no, I we're just hear giggles and, you know, whatever. Giggly gigglies. Now, on Sunday, we once again showcase the North American Regional Tournament for the Paladins Council Series and rebroadcast any of the CSGO action that you missed. Because it will have been Monday. Because <sighs> of time. And finally, there's that other show on Tuesday. Oh, what was that called Which again? you and I were supposed to host, and you were there. I know, there, I got sick. I we got sick. Have a great I was time. already, I know, I would have worn an Ethan mask. It's like Robin Big. Uh, but they're both small people. I don't know. Isn't big? Big's big. Yeah, big's 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 guy. Oh, you're saying they're both small. I yeah, gotcha. they're both small. They Finally, are. don't forget to watch our sister show, Tips and Tricks, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific hey, on Mixer.com slash Tips and Tricks. Ooh, they here. stand, but they're not out of frame. It's true. Leaderboards. Here we go. Josh and Roby and Tara <laughs> and Channel One. Okay. Now, I'm, on the one hand, I'm grateful that it's not Lennox, okay? So let's be clear. It is him, though. Gosh darn it! Well, a, a well-done junkyard dog, because I assume you don't work here. <laughs> I could be wrong about that. Uh, if, if, if you do work here, please tell me in the chat. But yeah, you know what? Nightmare Joker, you're right. Fired. Uh, so well done to uh, Josh, the one of the newest people to join our ranks. And of course, Roby, uh, who I believe will be coming and filling in for your yourself. When I disappear again. It's just, you know, here's the deal. Uh, Rikari is a very, very wanted commodity all over the world. And so sometimes we have to share him with people like Usain Bolt. That guy owes me money. Thanks for watching, everyone. Follow the channel so you get a notification when we get back live next week. And stick around while we host one of the streamers here on Mixa. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>